In the last video, we spoke about inflation, and I gave an introduction into the concept of inflation, which is an increase in the level of prices of goods and services over time. We also spoke about how inflation is calculated and something called the consumer price index. And as I mentioned in the last video, that is not something that you are going to be expected to know for grade 10, and you're not going to be asked questions on how inflation is calculated or on CPI. So I found that it's useful to have that information so that you can have a better idea of what it is that we are talking about when we refer to inflation. And it's something that is generally useful for people to know. What you will be expected to know for your grade 10 curriculum is to know how to apply the compound interest formula to questions involving inflation. So that is what you are going to be coming across in grade 10. You're going to be asked questions that are involving inflation, and that is just going to be another application of your compound interest formula. So in this lesson, we're gonna go over several examples like that, and you can get a better idea of the extent to which you are going to be dealing with inflation based on these practice problems that we're going to cover. So let's start out with an example. A house was worth 4 million rand in 2015. Assuming a constant inflation rate of 8% per annum, how much is the house worth in 2021? So we are told that back in 2015, which was six years ago, this house was worth 4 million rand. And since 2015, we have had a constant inflation rate of 8% per annum or 8% per year. And now we have to determine how much this house is worth after those six years of inflation. So let's start out by writing down our compound interest formula. And that was that the amount accumulated after some period of time is equal to our principal, which was the initial amount multiplied by 1 plus i, which is your, usually it's your interest rate when dealing with regular compound interest problems, but in this case, our i is going to represent our inflation rate. That is going to be to the power of n, which was the number of years. If any of this is unfamiliar to you, I do suggest you look back on our videos on compound interest, where we go over this formula in a lot more detail. So what we can do now is write down what variables we do know. Our A in this case is going to be the price of the house after a certain period of time where an inflation rate was applied to a principal. So our A is going to be how much the house is worth in 2021. That is what we are looking for in this question. So that is our unknown. Our principal is the initial amount of money when you're dealing with regular compound interest problems. So in this case, the principal is going to be how much the house was worth at the start of our period of time. So in 2015, it was worth 4 million rand. So 4 million is going to be our principal amount in this case. Our I, as I mentioned, is going to be our inflation rate. Normally, our I represents our interest rate, but in this case, our inflation rate is going to act similarly to how interest would act. It's going to be some percentage that is increasing the cost of this item at a constant rate of 8% per annum, and it's building year upon year, which is why we're using compound interest as opposed to simple interest. So our I in this case is 8% or 0 0.08 as a decimal. And our n, the number of years, is going to be six years because six years have elapsed from 2015 to 2021. So now what we can do is plug in our values into this formula. And we're going to get that a is equal to 4 million multiplied by one plus 0 0.08 to the power of 6. And now we're going to need to use our calculator. And if we plug that into our calculator, we are going to get 
347,497 and 29 cents. So that is going to be how much our house is worth in 2021. Let's go over another example. The price of bananas is five rand in 2021. Assuming a constant rate of inflation, which is 4% per annum from 2018 to 2021, what was the price of bananas in 2018? So in this question, we are told that in 2021, the price of bananas is 5 rand. We're also told that there was a constant inflation rate of 4% per annum from 2018 to 2021. And we are asked to determine the price of bananas back in 2018. So if we write down our compound interest formula, since we know we are dealing with inflation, we know to apply the compound interest formula. Now we can recognize that in this case, we are given our A. Our A is going to be the price of bananas after those three years have elapsed. So that is the five rand, that is the price of the bananas right now. And we are trying to determine the initial cost at the start of our period, which was 2018. So in this case, we're given our A value and we have to determine the P value. So A is five rand. Our P is what we are trying to determine in this question. I is going to be our inflation rate. That is 4% per annum. And as a decimal, that's going to be 0.04. Our N, the number of years, is going to be three years because three years have elapsed from 2018 to 2021. And now we can plug in what we know into that formula. And we're going to get that five is equal to P, which we are trying to determine, times 1 plus 0 0.04 to the power of 3. To solve for P, we are going to need to divide both sides by 1 plus 0 0.04 to the power of 3. So 5 divided by 1 plus 0 0.04 to the power of 3 is going to be equal to P. And if we plug this into our calculator, we are going to get that P is equal to 4.44. So 4 rand and 44 cents is the price of bananas in 2018. And let's go over one last example. Let's say a computer that was worth 9,000 rand in 2014 costs 10,500 rand in 2018. Assuming a constant rate of inflation from 2014 to 2018, what was the inflation rate? So we are told that in 2014, a computer was worth 9,000 rand. And that same computer cost 10,500 rand in 2018. So after four years, it has gone from 9,000 to 10,500 rand. And we're told that in this time period from 2014 to 2018, the inflation rate was constant. And we are asked to determine what that inflation rate is. So like our previous examples, let's start out by writing down our compound interest formula. And once we do that, we can write down the values that we know from this. We're told that after that period of time has passed, those four years, the computer costs 10,500 grand. So that is our A value. 10,500 is our A. Our P, our principal amount, that was the initial price of the computer at the start of that period of time. So that is the 9,000 here. So our P is 9,000. Our I is what we're trying to calculate in this question. That is our inflation rate. And N in this case is going to be four. Four years have passed between 2014 and 2018. So let's set up this equation based on what we know. 
that's 10,500 is equal to 9,000 times 1 plus i to the power of 4. And now since our variable is here in this bracket that is raised to the fourth power, what we can do to try and simplify this is to divide both sides by 9,000. That's going to get rid of the 9,000 on this side of the equation. So we can set 10,500 divided by 9,000 equal to 1 plus i to the power of 4. And now we're a little bit stuck with a bit of a complicated equation here, but what we can do to simplify this is if we take the fourth root of both sides, that is the fourth root, which is this, if we take the fourth root of both sides, what we're going to do is we're going to cancel out this four over here, because if we were to take the fourth root of one plus i all raised to the fourth power, we're just going to be left with one plus i. So what we can do is take the fourth root of both sides. So if we take the fourth root of 10,500 divided by 9,000, and we take the fourth root of this side as well, one plus i to the power of four. Well, we're definitely going to need our calculator to solve this. If you plug this into your calculator, take the fourth root and put this in your brackets, you're going to get that the fourth root of 10,500 divided by 9,000 is equal to 1.03928. And I'm going to leave extra decimals here because we want to get as close to our actual answer as possible. So when you're still working this out, it's best not to round up or down so you can get as close of an approximation as possible. This is equal to 1.03928. And on this side, if we take the fourth root of this, we are going to be left with one plus i. And we don't even need to include these brackets here. This is just one plus i. And now if we're trying to solve for i, all we have to do is subtract one from both sides. We're just moving this one to this side of the equation. So i is going to be equal to 1.03928 minus 1, and that is 0 0.03928. So our inflation rate i is equal to 0 0.03928, and that is the decimal form. If we want to express the inflation rate as a percentage, all we have to do is multiply this by 100. So if we move this decimal two places to the right, we're going to get 3.93% if we just round this off to two decimal places. So our inflation rate was 3.93% for those four years.